are on the Glen Gannon River in near uh, Cardona in County Donegal. Uh, and we're, today we're looking at some erosion on the riverbanks and we're going to see what we can do about that uh, using natural engineering ways of fixing up erosion. First thing we want to do is identify an area where erosion has taken place. And um, Patricia here is, was to tell me earlier on that, er, that this was uh, the riverbank only about a couple of years ago was out as far as here, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so um, about two years ago, Lawrence, this tree would have actually been fully on the bank. As you can see that the river has come down and eroded uh, um, along the edge, along the roots there, and so the, the tree now is at risk of falling. So a lot of this bank would have been eaten back just in the last two years. So, yeah. so it would be great to yeah, fix this protect that. And that's happening because the river... Uh, has, it's coming around a bend here. You might be able to pick that up. And, and during floods, the river picks up speed, picks up a lot of sediment, and it hits this banking at great force. And you can sort of see it the whole way along here. You can see where the soft banking is slipping away. Stones are falling down here. It hangs over. This, this eventually falls away. And the river just changes shape, you know, we, we sort of eaten into the bank in here and the other side, so it's, the whole thing's changing and moving all the time. So what we want to do, the normal way of fixing this would have been putting lots of rocks, concrete even, and maybe they would have done sheet stealing, sheet steel piles to protect the bank, and which looks pretty ugly and it actually doesn't work very well either because all it does is the river comes around here again, hits the, hits the rock, hits the steel, bounces off that, gets more, more speed up, and student starts punching a hole on the other side and more erosion takes place. So using green engineering techniques, natural techniques like using willow, the water comes round here. We, first of all, we, we managed to hold the, uh, hold the banking up with this, stop it falling down even more. The water then, when it comes down in a flood, the river hits this and instead of bouncing off it, it gets absorbed by the, the, the willow and gets taken in, brings sediment into it, builds up behind it because we'll put brash behind this as well and the whole thing naturalizes over, slows the river up, and the river comes out of again. This, the water passes through it, comes back out again, slower, and the whole banking stays in place, and we don't get this constant erosion that takes place. Now the farmer here wants to, to, uh, to hold on to this tree. He's very keen on the environment here, and he, he wants to look after his river bank. So we're, we're looking at this, and we could see that the, there's an opportunity here to maybe uh, do some uh, willow, uh, weaving here we'll put a fence along here and weave along here you could fill in behind it it's possibility of putting some rock roll maybe to protect us stop the water from undercutting it as well and very very quickly that'll naturalize up and the willow will start sprouting and hold the whole thing together so how how do you manage to fix the willow spiling to the to the river bank well first of all we'll use posts <clears throat> in this case we'll uh, use uh, ordinary uh, fencing posts Ideally, you'd, uh, you'd want to use actually willow themselves as cut into posts. That would, that would be the ideal way. It's not often possible to do that. Is that because the willow posts will grow then? They'll, they'll grow themselves, yeah. I mean, you can cut a big chunky branch, it's amazing. You can cut a point onto it, drive it into the ground, and it'll start putting roots on and up it'll grow, and it'll hold. There's nothing better. It's not often the easiest way to do that either because uh, uh, the willow is soft and it, it can't. When you're trying to drive it into stony areas like this, it doesn't go down too well. So sometimes we have to use hardwoods, you know, chestnut is one that's used often for this kind of work. And then you weave the willow through it. Or uh, even just ordinary pine posts. And ideally you'd want to get ones that haven't been treated for, you know, to keep them tantalised and keep them preserved, you know, as well. But, so you would start off, uh, you'd find a point. Here we could, we would find a point here where it's been undercutting here a wee bit. We would drive in a line of posts where we want the banking work being protected, fairly close together to allow the weaving to, to come in and out. To keep the weaving tight, really? Keep the weaving tight, exactly, mm -hmm. and, as you would know. And uh, uh, we would also tie the posts, ideally, in to, towards the firm banking. So you drive the posts in uh, and put then wire from the posts back into the banking into another post that's driven into the banking. So that anchors it because it, it's getting quite a strain, even though it lets the water run through. It, uh, it, it can be washed away pretty quickly. It's difficult uh, enough for the posts to uh, get firm foundation in the gravel and the, and the hard rock. That it's, it's very difficult and sometimes it can be actually solid rock that you're under, no bedrock, you know, mm. so it can be tricky. 
Uh, and so we never look for anything too pretty. Sometimes you don't actually get that. Sometimes the, the fence can be actually in and out. The, the spilling can be in and out all over the place. That doesn't matter, as long as it's pretty firm. And uh, But as you know, very quickly the, the willow gets growing and gets and once it starts to grow, and that's the best anchor of the lot. And yeah. is it important the type of willow that you use for the... Ideally you use locals to whatever you can find, yeah. you know, and that can be willow salix capra or viminalis. Anything that's indigenous to yes, the, indigenous to the area? That's what's best. So, mm. you know, we're here today and we're, go we're, we're having a look around to see if we can find some willow. We've got some stuff with us and that's the best thing to do. And we'll just we'll see, we'll get some decent length of rods, you know, the longer the better, maybe uh, eight or nine feet long and then we can weave them in the post then. So Lawrence, this is a site that we did last year. So originally this site had a vertical drop of about seven or eight feet. Yeah. And um, the landowner had put in some boulders here, but they were, it, they were, it was eroding behind it. Yeah. So what we suggested is that we take out the boulders and we build a brash revetment. So we did this last September and within a month, it had started to capture sediment and you can see it now this is what seven months later and it's the growth is coming back in and we've got lots yeah. of coming up back see in. That. but what we were wondering is is it appropriate for us to do maybe some spiling along here absolutely it's a perfect opportunity and it's, it's a great way of showing the, the process of how you've done that because you had the seven or eight foot drop you were saying here and as we've seen earlier on how soft and gravelly the banking is so the whole thing was just complete always going to fall down here so you you can see the posts still there and the brash that you put behind them seven months ago, you're saying just, yeah, it's amazing. So this was just posts set on the water and some bushes and brash set behind it. Gravel has fallen down from this side and set, sediments have set in between it. So now we've got a, a good solid banking and a good base to work off. And a perfect opportunity now to put the willow spiling across here as well. So maybe we'll, we'll do this today as this could be an opportunity, a great place for doing this. So we could run some posts along here and we could do some willow spiling across here. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we'll we'll find a place where the the willow are growing naturally here, and uh, we're thinking about maybe using these. Uh, so, th would this be suitable? Do you think, or this type of willow? Yeah, well, it's um, this is crack willow, and um, what we have here are the bottom pieces can be cut for using as stakes. So, if we sharpen the ends of this, the the, the stake lengths and hammer them in, they will actually grow as well. And then we can use, they're good straight pieces, you know, they, they're all fighting each other for the light, so they go straight up. Yeah. And uh, the further up the tree we go, then we're gonna find the thinner pieces, maybe an inch or a couple of inches of diameter, which then we can use for weaving between the posts. Yeah. So this is, and it's, it's naturally growing here, so it will like the river bank. It's, uh, yeah. We're not that far from it's in, really, indigenous, yeah. so yeah. And of course, the great thing is as well is that uh, it will regenerate as well you know, very quickly. Uh, I think these are some of the ones over here that were cut down last year and used for mm -hmm. posts. Yes, yeah, so we can sort of see them starting to grow up already. Yeah. Mm. So ideally done in the winter time, but <coughs> you can still do. That ideally, but then the the working in the rivers is a summer job, so yeah. so I guess we have yeah. to compromise. Yeah. Mm. And, and the sap on it as well wouldn't affect the weaving of it in any way, like does it make it any more brittle or if there's sap on it or anything? Uh, or I think nature. they're fairly flexible, even uh, even green and growing like this yeah. should be fairly flexible, so. Okay, well, we'll maybe make our way over and do a bit yeah, of cotton. Do some cotton. Yeah, let's do it. Great.
the main uh, purpose of keeping all these side branches on as well is that we want to create obstructions so that the sediment can gather around it so we're not too worried about keeping these really nice and clean it's not for an aesthetic this fence it's really a, a practical measure so uh, I tend to make sure it's long enough to reach the end post and then we'll go behind and in front and behind and down as far as we can and then I guess the next one well to counteract this one I'm going to put one starting at the same place so that they're working off each other so again what goes in front now comes behind <clears throat> now I may start at the next post so And then again, to counteract this one, I'm just going to put it in the same place. And the springiness of the willow works against each other to keep the posts in place. <coughs> okay. I'm going to turn this one around just so that we have the thicker part in the main fencing area and then all of this can catch the debris coming off the bridge and you find whenever that's uh, done like that Brenton that it um the fence gets stronger because of the counteracting branches? <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, the, um, the the posts won't move now that, oh, they're, yeah. now that they're held in place by these alternative weaving branches, yeah. It's just how how far do we push them, push them down as much as possible, isn't it? So there's yeah. no, no real gaps, is that the idea? That's the idea, and, and it, it, you know, that, that'll actually grow into the ground here and into the banking here as well so we have like two layers to, sec to secure this bank and this if we did nothing here this bank would be eaten away pretty quickly and would collapse and the normal thing then would be to build it up with stones and rock and concrete and stuff doing this way is very effective this was done last year we now have a good solid base to work off it's given us a foundation mm -hmm. so these branches sticking out have grown yeah quite well before that was just loose and uh, now the sediment gravel has moved into it good solid base allows us to come along afterwards put up this willow spilling which will grow under the banking strengthen the whole thing and of course green it all up you'll not see anything here there'll be lots of leaves lots of green coverage and good erosion control so all the time I'm, I'm really just conscious of the the last one I laid uh, the, the next one then is the opposite way so that they keep working against each other so this is behind so now I'm going to put it in front if you're if you're working with shorter pieces it's always good to use them but the way we can work that is get the thick ends either side of a post and then just start twisting And that helps to lock it in place. Now, because it's fresh willow, we can hear it cracking away. But as long as it gets into position, and then we can top it off with these clean rods now. So if we choose two of these rods similar to each other, so similar sort of strength to each other, they look good, yeah. So 
So this is the kind of top you're doing then, Brent? Is it a, a to the fence? So this would be a top, and it um, it just grips it grips the posts so that they don't move until such times as they start to grow or the this starts to grow. So again, it's uh, it's called pairing. It's a classic basket weaving weave. So that's, that's holding all this weaving down as well, so yeah. it can't be uplifted by the river. Yeah. And it keeps everything, like now we've got a quite a strong fence. Yeah. And then we just continue that as far as you can. And then do we, what do we do? We tie these into the bank maybe? We can do, we can, um, again, we have some willows there, we can uh, drive, drive them in. Tie it in. Drive it in and tie it in, yeah. And again, that will also sprout as well. So. Yeah. This is really striking the whole thing up. So it can take a lot of abuse, a lot of power flashed off it. I think you could do these every every three posts something like that then would you say and uh, you know you don't need to do everyone but because it's all so linked into each other you know it all supports itself pond, a farm pond that has filled in over time so um, the farmer is going to uh, renew the pond so dig out some of the vegetation so we thought this is a good opportunity to take this um, these wetland plants and put them over on the edge of the river behind the willow spiling um, that we're doing so these should help to build up the bank quicker. So just to finish off, uh, this is a pre-established core rule. It's uh, pre-planted with riverside plants. The core is uh, very basically, it's uh, coconut fibre and it's matted together, together to make this nice thick mat. We pre-planted with these uh, waterside plants, marsh marigolds, reeds, sedge, quite a mixture of stuff there. Uh, it means it gets a very quick, easy establishment. You're not planting little plants in that are going to compete with other grasses. We can set this down. Uh, sometimes we would peg it under the ground, and that's it. You have a you, you have a, you have the riverside planting with all the natural plants underway, and that'll that'll establish very very quickly. This is uh, sometimes this is using the erosion control where the water has been undermining the banking. This is a a, a, a net bag. We fill these with stones and it becomes a, a rock rose, like a big sausage. And uh, we set them down and you can 
when it's filled with stones at the bottom of the, the bank and in the water and you build them up in a sloping back uh, kind of a wedge shape three or four layers high and that gives you a really good solid base and it means that the water won't get in underneath and undermine the banking because we can do all this work very easily but it can still be undermined this gives us a good solid base and we can then build back from that almost like a foundation it, essentially that's what it does it gives you a foundation and so there's no under the water will always try to work on underneath it and it'll stop that happening we can build up on top of that and it's again it's rocks it's stones and a net all very natural mm -hmm.